so Mark, here we are again. I suppose we should say Happy New Year to everybody. Yeah, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, as always, thanks for your support. We, we was hoping to get a, an interview in before the New Year where I could wish that, but obviously it, it hasn't panned out that way. We've just been too busy and people have been off. But yeah, Happy New Year to everyone. And as always, thanks for your support continues to be amazing um, and steps up a gear every year so hopefully that continues into 2019. Um, anybody waiting for the latest transfer news and all the rest of it we're going to be slightly tantalising and make you wait till the end. So um, Make me wait for the end. <laughs> <laughs> make everybody wait till the end. So here we go with some housekeeping questions. Um, some of them you've heard before. Any possibility of having latest score updates from around the grounds running on the big screen during games? I know that that's something we are working on with our TV screen partner, ADI. Um, Anna Mitchell, our, our commercial director, um, fielded some questions from our board of directors over Christmas on this, just asking was it possible, and I know that we are working on it. And it should be made clear, any potential ideas from supporters about the big screen? Yeah, please send them in. Yeah. Please send them in. Anything we can do, it's, it's a, a great tool for us to use, and uh, obviously, you know, we want fans' input on that, and any way that they feel we can improve the service, let us know, and uh, we'll take that on board. Open house for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's for most things, to be fair, not just yeah. that. If any of these questions, part of it, but you know, anyone feels any, anything that they feel can improve the club, just always send it in to us. We'll always get a reply and we'll listen to them. Can we update the online seat booking system so it reflects the actual seat you purchase more accurately? So many times I've been put in a seat with a restricted view without being forewarned online through the ticketing site. I think we had a couple of emails coming over Christmas um, and again Anna with the ticket office di discussed this so what we've done where I believe you used to get a prompt when, when you dropped it into your basket to purchase that was where it said it was restricted view and I think that's where the question has come from um, however we've brought that forward now so that as you prior to dropping it into your basket it advises you is a restricted view seat that's what I believe is happening. And if, if that's not happening at the moment, it was discussing it's something that we're with Ticketmaster, our ticket um, sales partner, we will be looking to introduce ASAP if it's not already been introduced. But with that as now followed on to as part of the general discussions, I think what we are planning it hasn't hasn't been fully agreed, but something we're planning is to put the restricted view seats on sale last. Um, and we, obviously the announcement goes out and says we've only got restrictive view seats now left available. So there's like a double way that fans are made aware that there are only restricted view seats available and, and they don't have to waste their time going into the system, putting it in their basket only to find out it's a restricted view seat at that time. And just to make clear so people know how things work, we don't just answer questions here and then forget them, do we? We go back. No, we have a meeting with you, know, you get copied in and, and anyone relevant, we sit and have a discussion about it and see how we can improve the service. Yeah, absolutely. Right, this will make the groundsman happy. Our pitch is showing far more wear and tear and it's cutting up a lot easier than most other grounds in League One so far this season. Obviously, he wasn't at Gillingham. Did, he, did we have a problem with redying the pitch for, the, for this season? readying the pitch for this season? No, uh, as a, in isolation, we didn't. Um, I think we are one of only a few remaining um, clubs, even in League One, League Two now, that has the, um, what our groundsman would call an, a fully natural turf pitch. Um, I'd, I'd slightly disagree with the person asking the question because I've, I go to every game and, and I see all the highlights on when I get back home on the EFL show, um, and our pitch actually looks very, very well compared to other clubs. I mean, you use Gillingham as an example, which had a huge amount of money in and put in during the um, during this season, and I didn't think that looked that great, to be honest with you. And you, you use Gillingham as that example to, to clarify that. However, where I, I agree with the, the person posing the question, I have looked at the pitch, and yet. Early early doors when we played the first few games, especially the pre-seasons, there was a lot of, you know, players went in for a sliding tickle, huge chunks of the pitch come up. And I have noticed recently, following some quite heavy rain, the same thing has happened. So it's something that we are working on. It's something that I think moving forward, there will have to be, as with all things to do with football clubs, a substantial investment in one of these new um, 
hybrid pitches as, as such, yeah, but it's something under constant review. I don't think it's that bad at the moment. However, at some point in the future, it's something we may need to address. Why have the sections for home supporters in the Milton End been changed around? Away supporters get more toilets, more food kiosks and easier entry. Can't even fit going into the toilet at half time without missing the start of the second half. Has to be said we've had that in reverse. If we've had that in reverse in previous questions where people where we had people in um, the away fans in the northeast corner, which is obviously adjacent to the north stand, and our fans were historically we put them in the south east corner, you know, adjacent to the south stand and and supporters were complaining the, the other way around, Sam, you know, that the north side get all the best facilities and that. So it's part of an ongoing process where we are experimenting and all forms part of potentially looking at the Milton End for potential development in the future. And we are in that experimental phase. But there's very little difference between the toilets and, and the catering facilities in the north stand compared to the south stand side. So, you know, I think whatever you do, and this is why there, there are... There's been frustrations in the past, which you understand, where people see empty spaces, even though we advertise it as a sellout. Yeah. Because when you go beyond halfway, as a round figure, 14, 1500, um, it does create too much of a pressure on the facilities there, whether it be the toilets or the catering facilities. So we, we try and take on board that, that we, yeah, we, we could go and fill up and, and sell what we want, but from a health and safety point of view and from a, a, a fan experience point of view, it wouldn't be really acceptable. And, you know, when we have pushed the boundaries and gone a little bit over, we do get those complaints on a Monday morning where people have had to queue at half time to use the toilets and, and can't get anything to drink or eat. Is it true the academy is being merged into Pompey in the community and that players will have to pay to play? No, 100% not a fact. Our academy is a standalone entity. Um, it has to be that in regards of EPPP rules. Um, are we looking to work a lot more closely with Pompey in the community over a broad range of areas where we can utilise and maximise our strengths of, of each separate entity, of course we are. So in that regard, we've got amazing coaches in our academy. There's amazing coaches in PITC and the, and the work that they're doing in the development centres. So why wouldn't you look to, to cross over and help each other in that aspect? But in regards of our academy merging as such with it, no, that's not going to happen. Where would someone get such an idea from? Who knows, who knows. Yeah, I read a lot of things online and you'd just be there all night answering rumours if you started going down that route. Okay, so on the same subject, what has happened to the Pompey Academy Twitter page in terms of activity? Can we have social media team updates on results, fixtures, again, as it's all stopped for some reason? Yeah, I think there was a specific Twitter started by Mikey Harris when he was the manager of the under 18s and that's sort of been passed from pillar to post within the academy and the coaching staff where we have taken the decision that we're going to pull that now under the club control um, and forms part of the media team and the media output that we get rather than leaving it to individual coaches because with the greatest respect they're there to coach and, and manage teams not there to be tweeting out you know as and as you say what started off by Mikey as just something as a little bit of fun as the manager suddenly becomes the norm and but you know you've got um, Liam Daish and you've got Mark Kelly and all, all the different people and and they haven't really got the time to do that they're, they're fixated and if they have got time and they do it great but again fans have come to expect that now so we need to bring it back under the media. Are there any plans to put the pre-match videos out publicly at any stage? No it's, it's another thing we've discussed um, I think there's two clear reasons why why we, we're not going to do it number one you know when people come here on a match day you want that as part of the match day experience you want that as the wow factor if it's being shared out there and people come on a match day and it's the first time maybe they've been to to fratton park um and you know they've already seen it 20 times online it doesn't have that effect so the match day experience is key to protect that and legally um we have explored it and, and, and there are difficulties in, involved so Internally within the stadium under our PRS, Performing Rights Society, um, payments, we, we can do that. But to then broadcast it externally, you, you're into copyright territory and, and opens up a whole host of different formal legalities that we, ju we just, as I say, going back to the first reason, we, we don't see that as, as something we really want to do anyway. So why would we go and spend X amount of thousands trying to 
gain a copyright or you know um, license for it when we we don't it's not something that we really are looking to do anyway okay all right let's get on um january obviously your favorite month uh, yeah so here yeah. come the question are there funds available to sign ben thompson permanently? There, yeah there's, there's funds available to sign any player that, that kenny wants to sign permanently but you can't fall, put a gun to another club's head or, or a player's head and said and say sign here it just doesn't work like that and and in the case of ben thompson you know i'd loathe to talk about individuals you know it's not what i like to do but it's been out there joe gallon has said it and i and i can confirm that you know we did make contact with Millwall during the the term of of his loan here and um there's no desire from Millwall to currently sell Ben Thompson. Um, so we've worked hard to build reputations with clubs where we're attracting loans from, from the likes of Andre Green from Aston Villa and Dave Wheeler from QPR and, and Ben from Millwall, you know, a whole host of clubs now where we, we've, we, it's took six long years to build a reputation where people want their players to actually come to Portsmouth, you know, because of how we run the club. And the last thing we want to do is for a, short-term fix of maybe signing Ben, you know, tarnish that reputation by trying to undermine him. And I'm not using Ben as an example, I'm just using, sorry, I am using him as an example, but not specifically, that you, if we try to undermine the process with Millwall, where Ben, as an example, said, I don't want to go back to Millwall, you know, I'm loving it at Pompey and they've promised me this and they've promised me that, then pretty soon people stop loaning players to you. And we, we, that's not the club that we are. You know, we do things the right way. I hope I've got a lot of respect. I know Kenny has definitely got a lot of respect. You know, our previous owners and our current owners, again, carry that same respect. And we're not going to mess it up, you know, for the sake of one player. You can see why Ben is held out on a pedestal because he's been phenomenal, hasn't he? Do you know what? He, he is such a, an, an on and off the pitch, the way he conducts himself is a credit. He's a credit to himself, he's a credit to our club, and he's a credit to Millwall Football Club. He's just a really genuine lad that wants to play football, loves the game, wears his heart on his sleeve. He is a proper fans player, because even when he's not having a great game, you can still see him, he never, he never, he never gives up. You know, he just he runs around, puts 100% in every game, and, and, that, and to a degree, that's, that's what fans want to see. They pay their hard-earned money to, to come to here or for, to Fratton Park or follow the team away. And... That's what you want to see, and, and he gives you that every game. So where are you at the moment with Ben? You're still away? St still awaiting. Uh, Neil Harris, obviously the Millwall manager, has, has said publicly that um, he's, he's looking to recall the players and have a look at them. Um, I believe Ben can go back from the, the fifth or the sixth, so the sixth onwards. There's a window to recall him. Um, listen, if I was a betting man, you, you'd, you'd put your money based on what their manager said that they're going to recall him. But as I've always said from our point of view, as a football club, so take Ben and Ben's as a Millwall player, but if you look at our point of view, things change very quickly. So Millwall could sign two or three players, as an example, over the next week and then think, you know, leave Ben at Pompey to develop develop his, his skills there. Conversely, unfortunately, they could get a couple of injuries at the weekend and the first thing they, they do Sunday is pick the phone up to Ken and say, you know, we need him back urgently. That's just the nature of football. You can't, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's very transient and, and things change. That means you have to change your, your, your views and your actions accordingly. Okay, more players than Ben, obviously. Our success so far this season means several players are likely to be targets for clubs in the higher leagues. Are we going to be declining any offers for a regular first team players should the, should they arise or will the financial benefit from a player leaving take priority yeah that that's a good question in in regards it's balanced yeah um and, and this is a great platform to, to get out how things work in football so i gave an interview with the news this week that was true in regards of we are under zero pressure from anyone to sell any of our players. So, and honestly, that is, that is one of, like, on my life, that is the fact. We do not need the money. It's not a monetary aspect to a player leaving this football club. But as I always say, there's other things to take into consideration. So, if loads of boxes are ticked, I'm, I'm not, what I'm trying to get at is, and I don't want to panic any, any fanny because I'm not, 
pre-warning them that we are going to lose anyone because we are absolutely adamant we don't want anyone to leave. However, a bit like the Ben Thompson situation, circumstances do change. So as an example, you could get an astronomical bid this is the process, yeah? The player's agent is on the phone to me telling me what X player is going to be earning at their new club. And in some of the instances, it could be eight or nine times more than what they're earning at Portsmouth Football Club. Then you get the agent telling you the player's not going to be happy if you block the move. And if you do block the move, you're going to have to offer him this or he's, you know, maybe you know, um, his head's not going to be right, you know? And then from a manager's point of view, he has to then work out can I manage that situation? Is that going to have a detrimental effect on the rest of the squad? And how are the rest of the squad going to feel if you block such a dream move for a player that could end up at the top end of the champ and maybe a chance of going into the Prem? So you've got all these other knock-on effects. So you can never say never, and you know I always say that every time, but our intention, our absolute intention is to keep every single player that Kenny wants to keep at this football club. And just to be clear, yeah, because I saw last night a couple of um, based on me saying we're under zero pressure to sell, sell any of our players, quickly became, Catlin said, we're not selling any players. I haven't said that. You're under pressure there. So. Yeah. No, but I want to make clear, we don't want to sell. We're under no pressure to sell. Not from, from the manager, not from me, not from Michael, not from the board of directors, not from anyone. Our absolute aim this year is to gain promotion. And we feel that the players that we've got and the players that have got us in this amazing position, we want to keep till the end of the season. This isn't just Portsmouth. I was looking last night and a few of the comments were, yeah, Pompey selling club. That's a load of rubbish. It's an absolute load of rubbish. You look at Liverpool. Would you, Liverpool are currently top of the Premier League. Would you say that Liverpool are a selling club? No. But in the last few years, they've sold Suarez, they've sold Coutinho and they've sold um, Sterling. All players that Liverpool stated will not be leaving this football club, but they end up going. It's just, that's the nature of football. That's the business that we are in. I don't like it. I hate it. To me, contract or, or a shake of the hand and you agree something, that's job done. But we don't live in that world in football and we have to adapt accordingly. I just want to be clear, absolutely, now this, we are under zero pressure from our owners to cash in on any of our assets. If Kenny feels a player sale of any player can improve the squad and get us to what's required to get us to, to our ultimate goal this year, then it will be the manager's decision. Let's hope that makes it crystal clear. I can't be any clearer than that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one guy came up to me the other day before the Wimbledon game. He said, can you just slip in? Ask Mark how he relaxes, how he gets away from football. Your daughter's married to Jed Wallace. Your wife comes to football all the time. How do you escape it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to escape it. G genuinely, you know, I love it. I sit there at night watching clips, you know, dealing with emails. Um, if it's not with our owners, it'll be with other football clubs on things and, and dealing with, like, and to be fair to us, dealing with the staff. So I send an email 10, 11 o'clock at night pretty much to anyone that works at Portsmouth Football Club and I get a reply. Mm. You know, now I tr obviously try and be respectful of that. But, you know, Andy Redmond, you know, rightly so says, look, th it's something we have to cap. We are a hardworking club. It's something we want to be known as a hardworking set of, of staff, players, individuals, you know, but we, we are genuinely exactly that. We are hardworking. We put a shift in. People... You know, it's their life following Portsmouth Football Club and not just Portsmouth, uh, other clubs. It's, it's not a job. And if it is a job, go and get another job because it shouldn't. It's a vocation for me. It's not a job. It's something I, I like doing. So football is my relaxation. If, if I do have a five minute shut off, then my mind wanders and I'm not in a happy place. So I'd rather just focus on on football. Um, but yeah, it's people pay their money. You know, they work hard to come and pay, earn that money to come and watch us, whether it be home or away, I think we the me, the least we can do is is give them that that work ethic back, and we don't always get everything right, and we don't always achieve success. But at least a bit like we talked about Ben Thompson, we give a hundred percent along the way. And a new year, everything going great on the pitch, everything going good off it. Yeah, yeah, touch wood, um, everything um, ticking along. We we get to these every month, don't we? And and we're we're still there, and we had a few blips, obviously Gillingham and. No, my God, you know, after the Gillian defeat, you'd, you'd thought we were getting relegated this year. You know, some of the, the hysteria out there. But 
as I say, we've got to take every game as it comes. I've, I've got absolute faith in, in our board of directors and our chairman. I've got absolute faith in our manager, um, you know, his backroom team, the players. By the way, what a great group of lads we've got, you know, and that is a great culture that we have now built into this football club. I've got absolute faith in, in our staff and how we work. So as long as you get them key foundation pillars in place and everything else seems to flow off of that and we stick together we stick together where we win we stick together when we lose um, and decisions that we take you know if you if you take short-term decisions you get short-term results we are very much into making long-term decisions and, and getting long-term results out of that and I think you're seeing the fruits of that now and off the field the cash deals are ringing merrily they are, yeah. The, the, the store's doing fantastic. You know, our commercial team, as always, are doing an, an amazing job. Aligned with Tony Brown, our COO, you know, making sure that operationally we, we function as, as smoothly as, le, as, he, as we can. Um, just, this is not a, 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 a punt to sell, by the way, but, you know, tickets are selling out for the rest of the season's games as, and corporate hospitality, there's very limited availability. So, if you, if you are looking down the line and seeing games and, and believing that we're still going to be there and want to be a part of that, then, you know, buy your tickets, whether that be in corporate hospitality or your, your tickets early, because there, there are still some availability and I would urge fans to get on there and do that as quickly as they can. New Year, same old honesty. Thank you, Mark. All right. Thank you, Johnny.